Yeah. Ellie says, I think my sociopathic ex knew what he was doing. My narco narco pathaholic has no idea. Yeah. I, you know, just kind of from looking back on the different people in my life that have been, you know, like really outrageously problematic. That's kind of what I've noticed too. Like some of, everybody has varying degrees of insight and varying degrees of intention. Uh, some were a lot darker and more self-aware than others. And, you know, yeah. But it, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, if it's hurtful or harmful to us, it really doesn't matter if they're aware or not aware. It doesn't matter if it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're, you know, quote unquote, just an alcoholic or if they're a narcissist or if they're a sociopath or if they have, you know, borderline personality disorder, like it doesn't, it just doesn't matter. And I think a lot of people get caught up in that um, where they think, oh, but if this person maybe isn't a narcissist, maybe if they only have borderline personality disorder, then they can be fixed. And that alone in itself is, is really problematic thinking because, you know, like a person has to want to change. And if a person is, doesn't see any problem with their behavior, or if they continue to give a bunch of lip service to their behavior, you know, and they're, they're basically just on their best, be like being on your best behavior is not the same thing as actually changing. Right. And so it's understandable that people tend to get, it takes a person on, on average seven times before they leave for good because they get caught up in this manipulation and wondering, well, maybe this time will be different. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe they're not a narcissist. Maybe they're, you know, maybe I did have play some part in it. Maybe things can be fixed and, you know, on and on it goes, but it really doesn't, the, the magic starts to happen when we focus more on ourselves than we do on them. And that's a very hard thing to do because when you do have this person who has got some very obviously wrong stuff with them, right? They've got some big problems. They, they're maybe they're an alcoholic. They're struggling with drug addiction. They're, they've got, it's the, they are the elephant in the room, right? Like there's some major stuff going on and that the whole family is, is walking on eggshells around this person. They're incredibly abusive, but sometimes they're not these kinds of things. And if we can focus on, instead of trying to fix them, just be like, okay, I need to, what are, where are my deal breakers? Where are my boundaries? Where are my standards? What am I willing to tolerate? And for how long? At what point am I, where is my line in the sand with when I actually walk away? And I, I, somebody had posted in the group the other day, I think it was um, the video of the Ted talk from the gal that was in an abusive relationship. And there was a quote from her and she said, she never thought of herself as a battered wife. She always thought of herself as a really strong woman in love with a very troubled man. And I thought that that was so profound because that's the mindset of so many people that are in an abusive relationship. They're like, no, 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 it's fine because I can still hang in there. Like, it's not a problem if I can still tolerate it. And then they, you know, they're, dra they're dragged through hell until they can no longer hang on just because there's this this, this high degree of commitment. There's this high degree of like, like almost like pain threshold because they've been getting dragged through hell for so long. And plus all of these messages about what's, you know, staying through thick and thin and all, all of these toxic messages people tend to stay for a lot longer than they should. Not to mention all of the manipulation. You are not alone. You are not crazy. And you really can move forward and heal from this. Mm -hmm.